All right, crew. So we're going to start something new uh, this week. We're going to start with some mobility homework. And uh, what we're going to do in this video is focus on our hips. Um, and one of the most important motions that we have in our hips is hip internal rotation. So if you heard at the bottom of the squat or, you know, really with any other motion, hip internal rotation is going to be one of the main things that we want to address. So in this 10 minute video, um, we're going to focus on that. If this resonates with you, I want you to do this this week. All right. So maybe two to three times a week. So what we're going to do is we're going to start just in what is called bear sit. So you can get my legs wide like this. I'm going, to, I'm going to put my back against some kind of a wall or something, and I'm just going to find a stretch here. All right, I'm just going to hold here for about five breaths. All right, and this is called pails and rails. And when I'm stretching, this is a pails and rails stretch, and we do this a lot in our gym. But what I want you to think about doing is just breathing in. Okay, so I'm just breathing through my nose. I'm just relaxing into the stretch. What you'll, what you'll find is that I'm, as I'm relaxing into the stretch, with each breath, I can just kind of go just a little bit further because I'm telling my body to let go. I'm telling my nervous system to turn off. Okay, and that's actually what we're doing when we're stretching. We're not actually like making ourselves more flexible. We're just reducing the threat level that exists in our body. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to do a pales contraction. And pales means pushing away, so like P for push away. I'm going to start to push into my knee while resisting, or push my knee in my hand while resisting at about 25% effort. I'm going to build up to 50% effort. I'm going to build up to 75% effort. I'm going to build up to 100% effort, and I'm just going to try to really crush my knee into my hand for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and I'm just going to find a little deeper of a stretch. So you can see I moved just a little bit further in and I'm shaking a little bit. That's just a sign that my body's not used to being in this position. I'm just going to breathe and hold here for about five breaths. The research says we want to do at least about two minutes of this. So if this is a position that really is truly inflexible for you. You want to spend much longer here. I'm just kind of telling my body to let go of, the, of tension here. So when we stretch it, or so when we move through it, we can get a little bit more active control. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And again, I encourage you to just kind of try to compare one side to the other. Like, is one side more flexible than the other? And if it is, then we want to focus a little bit more on that side. So you might do like two or three of these. So I'm just going to take a couple deep breaths in. Exhale. Deep breath in, exhale, deep breath in, exhale. All right, so now we're gonna to start to start palesing into my knee by pushing it 25%. I'm gonna to go to 50%, 75%, build up to my biggest pain-free contraction for 10 seconds. So we've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, relax. I'm just going to try to find the stretch. I'm getting as deep as I can for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm just going to hold there and breathe. Just breathing and relaxing. Just letting myself sink into this position. And again, the more I think about tension and letting go, the more it will actually let go. It's kind of like the mind-muscle connection. You know, if, you, if you're thinking everything is tensed up here when we're stretching, then it's going to stay tense when we're trying to, try to get more. So in this position, we'll be pointing tense in a second, just trying to relax as much as I possibly can. All right. So we've opened up a little bit more range of motion. Now I'm going to come into a prone position here. Okay, so what this is gonna look like is, I'm gonna lie on my stomach, I'm gonna bring my knee up to the side, I'm gonna put a tennis ball under my knee, okay? And one thing that you'll notice as I'm in this position is that there's some space under my midsection here. I'm not all the way in the ground, I'm kind of rounding off. So one thing that we talk about a lot in the gym is like dropping your ribs, okay? That's exactly what I want you to do here. And so finding that, I'm gonna keep my abs the whole time. I'm gonna to start to push my knee into the ball, and I'm just gonna come up like that and just hold and come down. And what you'll find is like, you're gonna wanna cramp here, and that's normal, like that's a good thing, that's what we want. 
I'm just going to knock this out 12 times. So I'm going to come up, come down, and just think about holding at the end range and really squeezing and trying to feel that muscle in your hip. Kind of feel it working while keeping my abs. If I don't keep my abs, I can actually go a lot higher than this. But that's why now, rather than not being tense, I'm trying to put my hands on the ground, pull back, and be as tense as I possibly can be everywhere. I'm just going to knock out six more. Good stuff. Keep driving into the ball. We're just going to do one more here. And we're just going to switch sides. So same thing here. Get my leg up to the side here. This is the, uh, the Baywatch position, we call it. And again, you notice I'm, I'm pulling off the ground a little bit. I'll move up a little bit more so you can see me here. Driving the knee into the ground. I'm gonna start to lift up and come down. Lift up and come down. And again, just gonna hold at the top. For me, it's harder on this side to kind of feel my hip, so I'll hold a little bit longer. Let's hold and come down. Again, let's do that about 12 times. So we got like four more to go. Good stuff. Ah, going to come back to the other side. We're going to do one more round on each side here. So just bear with me here. And again, think about keeping your abs. One of the comments I get a lot in our kin stretch classes is that, hey, I really feel my abs the whole time. Like, that's great. That means that stuff is engaging. So again, just drive into the ball. Feel my hip acting up. Let's do one more like this now. Let's continue to hold up here. We're going to do something fun. Keeping your abs. I just want you to lift off the ball. Come down. Hold for a second. Come down. Lift off the ball. Come down. Try to keep your foot higher than your knee. Let's do three more. Lift off the ball. Hold. Come down. Lift and hold. Come down. Last one. Lift and hold. Come down. Now let's just switch sides and do the other side here. All right, so again, ugh. we're going to do kind of like five and five here. So I'm going to lift up and come down just normally five times. Then I'm going to lift up and off. It's going to hold up here like this. Now, again, keeping my foot higher than my knee. I mean, if you can't do this, just attempt to. We're going to come up, hold and come down. Every other part of my body is really squeezing into the ground. Try to keep your foot kind of in the same line. It shouldn't like come back towards your butt. We got two more to go. Let's lift up. Hold, come down. Last one. Let's lift up. Hold, come down. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to come out of that position. We're going to come into side line here. Okay. Side line. We're just going to do some hip cars. All right. So once we work on kind of a specific part of our hip, we want to do car. We want to do a car for that corresponding area to kind of get it to kind of upload that new information in my brain and help my hip to move a little bit better. All right, so we're just going to do a normal hip curl to kind of warm this up. I want to bring my knee to my chest here. I want to bring my leg to the outside as much as I can. Notice that I'm squeezing a ball between my knees, behind the back of my knee to kind of get some tension here. I'm going to start to come around like this. I'm going to come through. What I'm thinking about doing is pushing this knee into the ground. And I can either make a bigger circle or a smaller circle based upon how I can keep everything nice and straight here. So now we're going to play around with this a little bit. Now we're going to turn the foot in. And we're going to do an internal rotation biased car, which means that my foot is going to be higher than my knee the whole time. So I come out to the side, do a circle. But again, my foot stays up in the air. So you're just going to knock out about five of these. And again, just keep the foot above the knee. Squeeze the ball as hard as you can. 
two more to go. Last one, my hips really starting to burn. We're just gonna finish with an axial rotation here. So I'm gonna come out in this position. I'm just gonna do this about five times. So pretend your knee is kind of fixed to a point here. We're just coming in and out. Keeping that tension in the ball the entire time. Just gonna switch sides real quick. Again, we're gonna do one full car just to warm up here. And we're gonna come back around. And then we're just gonna do five full hip cars. Let me turn off my timer here. I'm running a bit of schedule, but a bit behind schedule, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and squeeze the ball between our knee here and the back of the knee. Let's get the foot above the knee. Let's make the biggest circle that we can with control. I definitely hear some cracking and popping in this knee. I'm sorry, in this hip. I'm just going to do two more here. Again, keeping the foot above the knee. Last one. And let's just finish with our axial rotations here. Come in and out. Two more. You're feeling pain and tightness in your hips. I want you to try to, again, perform, try to perform this maybe twice this week. Let me know how it feels. Post any questions that you have.